When you send out a tweet about a new video card you can't afford or how great the last episode of TechWiki was, have you wondered what happens? I mean, sure, we all know that it goes out onto the internet, but much like flushing a toilet, most people don't know exactly what happens to their chunks of uh, data after they post something. So where exactly does it all go? Well, to understand the answer to this question, it might help to keep in mind that the internet is not owned or even governed by any one group of people. I said not owned by any one group of people, but rather it works as a distributed system made up of lots of smaller computer networks owned by various ISPs, universities, governments, and other organizations that are linked together through what are called peering agreements. But Linus, hold on a second. If no one's really running the internet, then how does it stay working? Do we even know where it goes? There are organizations that help coordinate and direct internet traffic so that compatibility is maintained everywhere from Ottawa to Oman. Probably the most well-known of these groups is ICANN, which maps IP addresses to internet domain names. So when you punch in, let's say, linustechtips.com in your web browser, that actually isn't enough information for your computer to know what website to show you. So what happens is your ISP, your internet service provider, directs it to a DNS server which matches what you typed to the IP address that corresponds to it so you can connect and keep consuming the awesome videos we create. But once you do that, then how does the content itself get to your PC? One of the internet's most defining features is that it is packet switched, meaning that all data is broken up into little, well, packets, and then reassembled once it arrives at your computer. And while the idea of shattering and then reassembling something every time you need to move it won't make much sense for things like, oh, I don't know, human arms, the advantage of this approach for computer data is that it allows each packet to take the most efficient route possible. So if everyone in the town next to you where your traffic would have normally been routed through start streaming Game of Thrones at exactly the same freaking time, congesting any nearby nodes, causing some of your much more important My Little Pony packets to slow down, the remaining ones can be easily and dynamically rerouted via another path even mid-file so your internet speeds stay high. And because packets contain, in addition to the actual content, identification information that ensures they are being sent to the right place and that they can be properly recombined later on, normally none of the data ends up as a corrupted jumbled mess either. Speaking of jumbled messes, if you've ever tried to do something as simple as copy a file to an external hard drive on a Mac and then carry it over to a PC and open it, you're probably wondering how users on different operating systems, on different machines from different parts of the world, all manage to use the same internet. Standards bodies come to the rescue here again. They make sure that the same fundamental languages and technologies are used throughout the globe, including W3C, which is in charge of things like HTML and CSS, the languages that your web browser will interpret into something your computer can understand. So I hope this helped give you some idea how the world pulls together without a single guiding force to give us this awesome tool for arguing on Twitter and reading half-baked political opinions. Speaking of things on the internet that are way better than arguing on Twitter, FreshBooks! It's designed for freelance workers or small businesses, and the whole idea behind it is that instead of spending all of your time drawing up invoices and logging your hours as you move about from place to place working on jobs, you spend it doing jobs and getting paid. It's an online tool to allow you to get your accounting done quickly while you're on the go versus having to sit at your computer every night. It even allows your clients to pay you online via credit card. It's just like beep, beep, boop, send that invoice over to them and get paid. And I can tell you as a small business owner, half of the battle is actually getting the invoice sent out to the client. And then the other half is getting them to actually pay it. It's a whole other thing. Anyway, it shows the full history of every invoice, allows you to check if the client has viewed the invoice, which is another really handy tool. Oh, I didn't get that. Oh, actually you did. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. So if you're your own boss, then the idea behind FreshBooks is you should be using stuff that makes you feel like a boss and it's an easy way of doing stuff online instead of doing stuff the old traditional way. So head over to freshbooks.com slash techquickie and don't forget to enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. 
So guys, thanks for watching this video. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fast as Possibles. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss more of our videos here, wherever it is you're watching it.